Philip, what, what is the principle of this exhibition? So the, 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 the idea behind the structure of the exhibition and the conversation I had with Mark when we started to work on the exhibition was to reflect on the way an artist like him, from where he was, uh, reacted to a, a shifting moment in history, a, a time of crisis, political crisis in the United States, racial violence in the street of the United States, and the appearance of the pandemic that really... Uh, uh, so the starting point is end of 2019, early 2020. So the exhibition is really structured around three specific movements that represent an artist trying to make sense of what's happening around him, trying to continue to produce, to make a mark, no pun intended, uh, to leave a trace uh, regarding, illustrating, reacting to uh, a crisis unfolding in front of him and all over the world. Yeah, but the illustration is not obvious. Well, it's, it's, illustration might not be the right word. I think it, uh, as often, Mark uh, look at the world around him and transcend the, uh, the, uh, the event of the day. Um, in the exhibition we have here, where you have two, uh, basically deals with two moments of violence. Uh, urban violence and I would say uh, sanitary violence, uh, pandemic and politics. One aspect of that uh, is the work that he has done from and inspired by the, the Dame à la licorne, the lady with the unicorn tapestries, the cycle which is uh, at the cloisters in New York, the hunt of the unicorn, which looks like a nice uh, 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 group of tapestry with uh, people hunting around, but uh, at the end of the day, it's a slaughterhouse, it's a carnage, it's a group of men with weapons uh, running after a creature that doesn't belong. There is, of course, a lot of biblical interpretation of this work, but for Mark, rather than illustrating what was happening in front of him, he transcends the anecdote of the day and try to put it in an historical perspective. As many, as very often in his work, and always in his work, he's very interested in the, um, in the weight of humankind, what happened to human beings. And the unicorn become the, the icon, the symbol of the most vulnerable among us. Uh, for political, social, racial reason. And the way he's done it, and the, the, the notion of transcending uh, both the past and the present is very embedded, very much embedded in, in the way he works, where the first image, so these tapestries from the Met, uh, the unicorn, the lady with the unicorn, are printed on this very large canvas and then covered and covered and covered with papers and different kind of papers and then erased. And this notion, this idea of erasure to reveal the violence of the image. It's also a work that it does to recover memory, to reclaim history, an history of violence and exclusion. Yes, but the technique is amazing too, right? The technique is amazing and is, you know, it's the technique that Mark has used uh, from, I would say, the very beginning of his work when he started to work with what he called the merchant posters that he was lifting from the street. And we have an entire room with this merchant poster where he's taking the, uh, uh, the decorum, the adornment of the street, this advertising that always, the way he picks them is very specific. He's always focusing on advertising that put their finger on a human, uh, human crisis. So you have deep divorce and custody uh, related to uh, one of the impact of confinement. Uh, we have one about the uh, real estate crisis, but it's always pointing towards a moment of human distress. But from the very beginning, his process, his technique is the same. It's palimpsest. He covers and he erased. He covers and he erased. So it's both a gesture of uh, 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 iconophilia, the love of images, images and uh, iconoclasm, the destruction and the erasure of images. But there's something new in the image with this work, right? 
So we, 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 with this body of work that he did for Sir Alves, uh, something new appears. Uh, for the, almost the very first time, the figure, uh, the after image, the memory of the figure is, is present. Because when you look at these, these tapestries closely, and if, if you spend time with them, you start to see, almost like ghosts, the figures of the tapestry, the hunters, the unicorns, the landscape, the floral pattern. And it plays with this notion of uh, in-between. There is discussion around this work, whether it's abstraction, what he calls social abstraction. Uh, for me, it's not. It's, a, it's an extraction. He extract meaning from existing iconography, whether this iconography comes from the street or from the walls of the medieval rich and famous. <laughs> <laughs> and it, the colors are new too, no? The colors, well, the, he's a colorist. I mean, the one behind me or the one on the side, they're also very aggressive. Uh, they are luscious. And it's also one aspect I really uh, admire in the work is this push and pull, which goes back to also the history of American abstraction, uh, between seduction and repulsion. But they are luscious. There is something about uh, the seduction of the eyes, so that when you're in front of it, you keep looking, you keep looking, and then you understand what it is about, and this history of violence that is unfolds in, this, uh, in these tapestries. And then you see also, which I think is very coherent with the work, the layers and layers of paper that he used varies. It could be monochromatic industrial paper, but there is also, like the tapestry, with these papers, comic books that unfold narrative, like the tapestry themselves. So when you see the, the, the works from a distance, this kind of skins that has been uh, uh, moved, removed from the wall, you have this feeling of abstraction, and when, when you go closer, you see the details, you see the speech bubble, you see that uh, embedded in the fabric of the work, you have discourse, you have language, you have uh, uh, spoken words, which is also what Marc is interested in, it's the voice of, of others. Merci, monsieur. Je vous en prie, madame.